What's your true supernatural, unexplainable, downright creepy story? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. My family moved to this standard upscale suburban home after roughing it for a couple of years to save up. We also got a deal on the home because it was a model home before it was ours, like having all the fake furniture to show off the neighborhood homes. Anyway, it had this loft area with two stairwells that go up to it, one in the front and one in the back. You could pretty much hear everything from this loft since it was so open. One day, my two best friends, a guy and a girl, are hanging out in the loft. We were in high school, and they were horny and always all over each other, whether I was in the room or not. We were watching TV, and I got up to take a piss. When I left, they were all up on each other. When I came back, they were on different ends of the couch. I just knew they had gotten into a fight, so I asked what was up. Your little sister is home, the dude says. My face turned sheet white. What's wrong? The girl asked. I asked them what made them think that. They said they hurt her. I am sort of freaking out at this point. No one's here, I say. We check the house, and I'm right. Well, it turns out that before it was a model home, a family lived there, and a little girl had been playing in the loft but had climbed on the railing and fell to her death below. My two best friends swear, to this day, that they heard what they thought was my sister laugh and run up the stairs, hitting her hands on each step like she was running up on all fours. I never had any encounters, other than the fact that right next to where she landed was the house central intercom. We had an intercom system in every room that you could play music through or talk to each other. Every so often at night, at the same time, you'd wake up to the intercom button being pressed and just the blank sound of static airways, like someone was holding down the button but no one was speaking. My room was on the third floor, and I'd have to walk down to the bottom of the main unit and turn it off there. I always thought I'd see her. When I was a baby, we lived in a big old manor house with my grandparents. One day, my dad woke up in the middle of the night to see what looked like a ghost of my mom on top of the bed screaming and trying to get into my mom's sleeping body. This freaked him out so much that he refused to ever go back to the house, and we moved out. When I was about six, we had moved out and had our own apartment. One morning, just after we woke up, my mom went to make a warm cup of milk for both of us. It was winter, and the lights were off in the room but on in the corridor. I can remember vividly seeing the dust come together, and a ghost in the form of my mom, dressed like she was from the 1800s, came together and walked out of the room, following after my mom and not acknowledging me in any way. It was the most surreal thing that I've ever seen, and I still vividly remember it. I was invited to a sleepover at my friend's house when I was 9 or 10. It was in a crummy, crime-ridden part of town, and I was already apprehensive about the whole thing. It turns out my friend planned for us to sleep in tents outside in the backyard. We go to sleep, and I unexpectedly wake up in the middle of the night. All my friends are gone from the tent. Freezing cold and absolutely terrified, I look around the yard and eventually enter the house. None of the doors are locked, and for the life of me, I can't find a living soul. I'm practically all alone, scared the hell out in my pajamas. I find a phone and call my mom. About 15 minutes later, she picks me up and takes me home. Later, I found out that my friends had moved to a different tent in the yard without telling me. In my panic during the night, I thought they had all disappeared. Not really supernatural, but in the moment, it was the most horrifying, inexplicable thing I ever had the displeasure to experience in my childhood. I'll be home alone one day. It wasn't dark, spooky, raining, or anything. It was the middle of the day, and I had just gotten home from work. Now, I poop with the door open when I'm home alone, since why the hell not? I'm doing my business and browsing Reddit as per tradition when I hear my laundry room door open and slam closed. Oddly, it's only 2 p.m., and my parents don't get home from work until at least 4. My sister was at school, but maybe she left early. I yell hello and reach over and close the door so that whoever is home doesn't have to see me pooping. I hear some footsteps walk into the living room, then just stop. I yelled again but got no response. My dad listens to audiobooks a lot on his phone, so I figured he walked in with earbuds in and didn't hear me. I finish my business and walk out to see who was home, but no one was there. I kept yelling around the house, but there was no answer. I walked outside, 
and it was just my car in the driveway. I started to panic a little bit since my laundry room door is quite heavy and is very loud when it closes, so there was no way I misheard something. I searched the whole house and looked outside at the patio, side yards, etc. Nothing, no one was there. I then got this huge feeling of fear, bolted back inside, and just sat on the living room couch, waiting for something to happen. Nothing happened. No noises, no sounds, no doors opening, nothing. I eventually got up and went back to my room, and I never heard anything again. It would have scared the hell out of me had I not taken care of that problem before. I guess it's not incredibly scary or anything, but it is weird. When I was about 12, our family moved into a new house, new to us but actually quite old. It was in our same village but down a different lane. Part of it used to be a bungalow, so my room and my sister's room were on the ground floor, down a long hallway. All of the ground floor had walnut flooring, and there was a Persian rug outside the door to my room to avoid cold toesies in the morning. Every night, around 11 or so, I would hear footsteps walking at a fairly slow pace right down the hall, from the end guest suite up past our rooms and away down the hall to the living room. I was always in bed when I heard them, and so was everyone else. You know how you can tell who a family member is by the way they walk up the stairs or open a specific door? I knew it wasn't anyone in my family. Plus, it was the sound of outdoor shoes clacking on the wood, and everyone in my family wore slippers inside the house. I would hear the footsteps start fairly loudly on the wooden floor, way down the hall, come up past my sister's room, and then there would be a pause while whatever it was walked over the rug. You could hear the gap in the footsteps for about three seconds, then they would start again on the other side of the rug and fade out as they walked down the hall to the living room. Then they would come back in the same footsteps, break across the rug, and resume on the other side. I don't remember ever feeling scared, but I never went out to see what it was. I would fall asleep to the sound, and it would go on for a really long time. It stopped about three or four weeks after we moved in, and I never heard it again. I didn't really think about it much after it stopped, but I've never forgotten it, and as an adult, it makes me shiver to remember it. Creepy depends on your perspective on it, but you have lost time. My brother was helping me across the country. We borrowed a van and loaded everything up for the last trip. Just before we left, I checked my watch and told my girlfriend that we would be hitting the road soon. My brothel checked the kitchen clock but only told me later that he did. We set out but couldn't do more than 80 kilometers per hour because of the load. When we took off from my new city, my brother told me he couldn't remember the trip, and when I thought about it, neither could I. We both thought we were tired and thought nothing of it. However, when we arrived at my new house, my girlfriend asked if I had broken the speed limit because we were almost an hour early. When retracing the route, my brother and I both agreed that we could remember passing a certain gas station and nothing thereafter, until the off-ramp. To this day, we have no clue what happened during that hour we're missing or how we could have traveled that fast. Not with any car or van at least. Now, at the beginning, I wrote that we both independently check for time. This is important for us because one time source could have been wrong but not both. Also, I called before we left, which limited the time we could use to travel. Since then, we have never experienced any weirdness like it or otherwise. I don't have any weird memories or dreams, no piece of metal lodged under my skin, etc., just an hour I lost. When I was around 10 years old, I had this super messed up dream. It started out with me in my house, alone, during the day. It's a small house, several minutes walk to the closest neighbor, and more or less surrounded by woods. I heard something coming down the driveway, like tires crunching in the gravel, but much slower. I went out on the porch to investigate and saw an old-fashioned covered wagon being pulled down the driveway. For some reason, this filled me with dread, and I ran back inside to lock all the doors. Once that was done, I walked down the staircase into the basement, where I knew I could see him from the window built into the door. The wagon stopped moving once I was watching, and the man climbed down from the seat and stood in front of it. He was dressed in a black suit with a black top hat, and he was looking right at me through the window glass. Once he was sure that I saw him, he walked to the back of the wagon and pulled off the cover. There were people hanging from the supports at the top of the wagon, feet dangling, rope around their necks. They looked dead, but the man in the top hat did something, and their heads started inflating. It got to the point where it looked almost cartoonish, eyes bulging out, red faces, 
The works. He kept looking at me while he did it, and I just knew he was going to do the same thing to me. I woke up absolutely terrified, and to make things a thousand times worse, the power was out, meaning it took me a ridiculous amount of time to make my way into my parents' room and camp out on their floor. Here's the creepy bit. I never told anyone about this particular dream because it was so freaking weird. Maybe two years ago, my family and I got into a conversation about the freakiest dreams we'd had. I figure, what the hell? It's been 10 years, and I can probably bring it up without hyperventilating. So I start telling the story, leaving out a lot of details for brevity's sake, and when I get to the part about the wagon coming down the driveway, my younger sister gets the weirdest look on her face and says, was the man wearing a top hat? We quizzed each other, and we remembered most of the details in the same way. I can't quite figure out how we both had the same dream, though I think a likely explanation might be that one of us told the other about the dream and then forgot. And the other party just constructed their own memory of it. But I distinctly remember not telling anyone about it because I thought it was too weird to share. I still get freaked out when I think about it, and to date, that's probably the strangest dream I've had. I don't think it's supernatural, but it was creepy. My mother died suddenly three years ago, eight days before the birth of my son. There's a picture on the wall of my house of her, and he knows it's grandma. My dad is still in that house, but we have never visited, partly because I have a mental hang-up about going back there and partly because of the logistics, it's an overnight ferry. Dad visits us often, and I will go back there soon. Anyway, my son has never seen the house, and I've never shown him photos of it. He hasn't been to the village, the area, or even the country, France. I was showing him Google Maps last week and the thing you do with your phone or tablet where, if you move the device, the field of view moves with you. So I'm showing him our house, his other grandmother's house, his school, etc., and he gets it and has a play. My dad lives in rural France, so the Google car hasn't done a pass of his street to my knowledge. I decide to check, and it's just been done, so I drop the pin and open it up. The view opens with the house over the street, so I start to move it and my boy shouts, Grandma's house. A bit taken aback, I ask, how did you know that? Because it was. It's a bit eerie, so I ask him to point at the window and say which one is the kitchen, and he puts his finger on it straight away. Which room does Daddy sleep in? Which one is Grandma's? He points to it and says, it was that one. Loads of rational explanations, etc., but it creeped me out. My aunt's house is haunted. She moved there when my cousin was about two. She knew it was haunted instantly, but she stayed because the ghosts were not malicious. My cousin, now about 30, grew up there knowing it was haunted, as well as my two younger cousins. They talked about it so nonchalantly, like it was just part of their daily routine. I'm way into spooky stuff, so hearing this time and again at family functions, I asked to spend the night specifically listening to the ghosts, I was about 17 at the time. Here is exactly what happened that night that was strange. My cousin, my aunt, and my aunt's friend are watching Carrie. It's winter time, and all week their fireplace has not worked. My cousin says out loud, when is this movie going to get scary? Just then, the glass patio door in the kitchen opens. After the movie, we went to the hot tub because we were cold. After a while in there, we come back inside, and the fireplace is blasting full heat out of it. My aunt laughs it off as the ghosts mess with us, they play pranks like this a lot apparently. After everyone is asleep, I am on the couch, and my cousin is on the floor next to me. I hear footsteps from the basement coming up the stairs. The basement door is visible from where I am lying. I hear the steps come all the way up the stairs and stop on the top. I am terrified and expect someone to come out the door, but nothing. A moment passes, and the steps go back down. This starts to repeat up and down the stairs. I wake up my cousin terrified. I say, listen, listen. It's crystal clear, a person is walking up and down the stairs right there. He looks at me and is like, dude, that happens every night, go back to sleep. It went on for about 30 minutes, up and down the stairs. I was mortified. I have more stories from my aunt, but that was one of the experiences I had. On other occasions, I have also seen lights turn on and off and heard more footsteps. She thinks it's children. They live across the street from a school that also had people report strange activities. When I was in high school, my uncle would throw me a couple bucks to help babysit his kids with my aunt. 
They lived in a two-story house by the water in a nice area. The kids were about three and six, respectively. One day, I was sitting in their den on my phone when I started to hear a baby crying. Thinking it was the three-year-old, I headed to the bottom of the stairs to check and see if my aunt was up there dealing with it. I called for her a couple times with no response. The baby kept crying. I called for her one more time, and when I got no response, I started walking up the stairs. Then I heard my cousins and aunts playing outside. All the hairs on my body stood up, and I literally felt a chill run down my spine. I quietly turned around, walked down the stairs, got in my car, and drove away. The baby was still crying when I closed the door behind me. A few years later, I was drunk at a family party and told my uncle the story. He told me that he and his wife used to hear the baby too, and apparently the previous owners had a kid die of SIDS in that room upstairs. He's uber Catholic and had a mass said for the baby. He said that after that, it never happened again. It still gives me the willies when I talk about it though. Last year, I was staying in a hotel with my mom. One of the nights, as I was lying in bed, I noticed a human silhouette maybe two meters away from me. I figured it was just a shadow, so I tried to ignore it, but I couldn't. I turned the light on, and obviously it disappeared, but when I shut off the lights again, it came back. I tried to convince myself that it was just a shadow, but trust me when I say there was nothing in that room that could have made a shadow like that. I looked around the room several times. It also occurred to me that the shadows weren't there the previous nights, and nothing had been moved around. It looked just like a human silhouette. I never believed in ghosts, but right then and there, I was terrified. I was too scared to look at it, so I turned around and eventually fell asleep. I told my mom about it the next morning, and she just shrugged it off. She said I was just imagining things, fair enough. That shadow wasn't there the next night, or the next. A few days after we had gotten back home, my mom was doing something in the kitchen, and I was just sitting there studying. Without turning around, my mom said, do you remember that shadow of a person you saw at the hotel? I said yeah. My mom just said, I saw it too. My blood turned to ice. Mom didn't want to admit that she also saw it, I thought that she was sleeping, because she didn't want to freak me out. I'm convinced that if ghosts exist, I saw one that night. My mom thinks it was the ghost of her best friend, who had committed suicide just a few days prior. Mom had spent hours earlier that evening writing her a long letter for some kind of closure. Maybe her best friend also wanted to say goodbye. I am an outdoorsman, I'm very experienced in hunting, camping, hiking, and general survival. I'm very familiar with and used to wildlife, and I was charged by what I believe was a cryptid called a dogman. It charged me and my cousin, it was not a bear, a bear cannot move how it does and it was not a normal wolf as they can't comfortably run on two legs, whereas what charged us seemed natural at doing. I can elaborate further if you wish. This happened around June or July of 2007 I believe. I was around 17 years old and more cocky then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors. My family used to own a cabin in northwest Wisconsin. I basically grew up there in the summer, I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin, or at least by the bonfire by the beach, because of bears, wolves, and cougars. One of the creepiest things was that if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach, and at night you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. But during the day, the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy, that is, until this incident. So this happened somewhere between 12 and 2 p.m. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle, I was in full woodland camo, he was not. I retreated onto the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage, and our battle took us about 200 meters, or about a third of the way up the trail. We had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail talking, and he was maybe 10 feet from me. When I decided to mess with him, I shushed him and said, we're being watched. He froze. Then I realized the woods were dead quiet, and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line in the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away, it was panting and staring at my cousin. I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds, but it wasn't normal. This wolf was on two legs, crouching next to a tree with its arm grasping the tree, grasping with a clawed hand. It had reddish brown fur. I told my cousin that we have to go, and next thing I know, he is sprinting, 
and I look back at Wolfie, who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet, and then I turn and run when it looked like Wolfie was dropping to all fours. It charged us and sounded right on our asses barreling through the brush, but for whatever reason, let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size. Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven feet tall when upright, and where it should have had front paws, it appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it rationally. I have heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright, but as far as I know, they can't sprint on two legs, nor do wolves get that big, and black bears more often waddle on two legs. The closest description is silly, a werewolf or dogman.